Nearly all animals constrain their daily movements to relatively stable areas for at least a portion of the year, and migratory birds are no exception. Here we see a male Kirtland's warbler just after arriving to the breeding grounds in Michigan. Initially, he only moves within a relatively large home range. However, occasionally, he may foray outside of this home range, perhaps to forage for a rare food item, like a caterpillar. This male's space use begins to be constrained when other males arrive and start to aggressively defend their own territories through song and physical encounters. Two females arrive and choose their mates. Though these pairs will spend nearly all of their time within these small territories, they may occasionally make short distance forays, perhaps to pursue extra pair copulations. The male in the bottom right has failed to attract a mate and is about to adopt an alternative space use strategy known as floating. Here we can see him begin to move more widely. He may be looking for an available mate or prospecting for information about habitat quality that he can then use to inform decisions about where to breed next year. As he fails to find what he is looking for, he leaves this breeding site altogether. Forays and alternative space use strategies have mostly been studied at single breeding sites, and therefore the true spatial scale of these fascinating behaviors has likely been underappreciated. To study large-scale alternative space use strategies in Kirtland's warblers, we employed a unique strategy. We first captured adults on the wintering grounds in the Bahamas, allowing us to sample the population randomly with respect to later breeding status or space use strategy. Next, we attached a tiny 0.3 gram coated radio tag to their backs and released each bird back into the wild. To follow the birds as they flew nearly 3,000 kilometers from the Bahamas to Michigan, we used the MODIS wildlife tracking system. Each yellow dot here represents an automated telemetry tower that is part of the network. After arrival in Michigan, we used 12 more towers there to relocate each tagged bird and track their movements throughout the breeding season. Now let's take a look at the actual tracking data. Here we see a map of northern Michigan where 97% of the world's population of Kirtland's warblers breed. The open black polygons show all breeding habitat in the area, and the black diamonds indicate the 12 automated telemetry towers. Once the animation begins, we'll see both white and colored tracks. White tracks indicate birds exhibiting a typical space use strategy, while the colored tracks indicate 19 individuals that will eventually adopt an alternative space use strategy. On May 9th, the first male arrives to Michigan. Birds first arrive one at a time, and then the pace picks up with more and more individuals arriving each day. As arrival continues, notice that individuals are often detected at multiple towers, but quickly settle at their eventual breeding areas. Now most birds have arrived, and the earliest arrivers begin to build their nests on May 26th. A few days later, on May 30th, these birds have laid eggs and started to incubate them. And by June 5th, most females are now on eggs. Note that other than a few late arrivers, large-scale movements have stopped. Eggs laid in the earliest nests begin to hatch and adults start feeding their young on June 13th. Here is where things start to get exciting and we start to see some unexpected long-distance movements. 11% of breeders and 60% of non-breeders shown in color begin moving to other spatially isolated breeding areas up to 77 kilometers away, while typical breeders shown in white remain on their small territories all season long. These large-scale movements continue through the nestling period, and even more movements take place during the fledgling period. During this time, nestlings and fledglings make loud, species-specific begging calls and are fed almost constantly by their parents. These obvious cues provide publicly available information about reproductive success and habitat quality in the area. The tight temporal correlation between movement frequency and the availability of this public information suggests that these long-distance movements are in fact prospecting trips. After reviewing similar movements in 65 other species of birds and mammals, we found that Kirtland's warblers moved farther relative to their normal daily movements than all other species reviewed. Although Kirtland's warblers initially appeared to be exceptional, we believe that this finding is mostly an artifact of technological limitations. We expect that as technology improves, other scientists will begin to detect similarly long-distance movements in many other species. If long-distance movements outside of the normal territory or home range are as common as we suspect, 
and there are important implications for the ecology, evolution, and conservation of animals. Most obviously, if animals are moving at larger spatial scales than currently understood, then we may not be conserving all of the areas and habitats necessary. In addition, if animals regularly exhibit long-distance prospecting behavior, this suggests that dispersal is informed more frequently and at much greater distances than currently understood. This is critical to understand because dispersal has profound effects on a species population dynamics, potential for range expansion, and extinction risk, particularly in the face of large-scale environmental changes like global climate change.